Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Devani, the Total Connector. Really excited to have Danny Brewster, CEO and founder of Fast Bitcoin, on my show for the first time. It makes me happy. You know, there's more and more. I see more and more healthy competition uh, amongst Auto DCA providers. Uh, you know, where you can stack sats uh, on a regular basis. Uh, you know, buy, sell, educate. And, you know, it's it's good that, you know, it's Bitcoin only. This is what we need, you know, uh, the e more ethos and, and, uh, and, and a clear position, crystal clear position on where we stand. And, um, yeah, so check him out. I'm going to put those in the show notes anyway, but uh, check him out on Twitter. Uh, BTC Danny is his Twitter handle. Um, you can also find Bitcoin Fast on on Twitter too. And the website is fastbitcoin fastbitcoins dot com so without further ado this is my talk with danny brewsters and let me know what you think uh, please retweet uh, share subscribe follow me whatever you do it support me in any shape or form and um yeah talk to you soon welcome to the show danny brewster thank you thanks thanks for having me Thanks so much for your time and coming to my show. It's really, I'm really amazed and, and fascinated by, uh, by fast Bitcoin. Um, okay, Danny, why don't you just um, briefly uh, give a little bit of background on your, on your path to Bitcoin? Because it's very interesting. I saw on Twitter that you were at that time in 2013 uh, when, you know, the Cyprus bail-in started. Uh, was it 2013, 14, around that time? Oh. It's 13, um, when the bail-ins happened there. Um, I was unfortunate enough to be there, um, living there um, in Larnaca when it all happened. Um, the, I actually, on reflection um, now, I've probably spoken about it a couple of times, but the, the reality of the situation is it was a, um, an horrendous situation. Um, the outside media, um, made it out to be something that it wasn't, especially when it came to like the Bitcoin media. Um, and I, I, I was in that, um, the, that, that bubble at that time. And um, maybe the, the media articles was giving myself like confirmation bias uh, and things like that, uh, that was in the perfect storm to, to launch a business in that environment because this had just happened. Um, and it, now on reflection, it was a terrible idea, um, and the, um, the the actual situation wasn't what I believed at the time. I just thought, oh, the banks have just gambled away uh, everybody's money, and they've taken all of these risks, and now everybody's got to pay for it. Uh, but the actual reality of the situation is, the general um, population was borrowing money from the Cypriot banks to invest in Greek bonds, which all went bad. Um, and then they all defaulted on their local debt in Cyprus, which created the problem. Um, so the, this should have been uh, maybe a bit more um, uh, people acknowledging it, that it was their own um, behaviours in, in chasing those returns um, because pretty much everybody drove a, a new Mercedes uh, in Cyprus at that time based on the returns from these Greek bonds uh, that was paying higher returns than what they was borrowing uh, for um, in Cyprus and stuff. So, um, but ultimately the banks did um, create the conditions and promote that idea to people that they could do this and it was sustainable and uh, things like that. Um, so, but, that, but that's only on reflection that I managed to learn that and understand that. But the... At that time, I thought, great, we've got this perfect opportunity. People will be looking for something different. Um, they've now witnessed people put their hands into their bank accounts and literally take money. Um, they did change the original plan um, of taking 8% of everything over a thousand euros to 50% uh, of everything over a hundred thousand euros. Um, so it did only impact those that held um, more wealth, but uh, there was lots of businesses impacted and stuff like that. Um, which was um, like large companies that was about to run payroll if they had more than a hundred thousand in their accounts, then they got haircut uh, and things like that. Um, so it left companies struggling for, for payroll and stuff, um, which had uh, obviously a, a compounding impact throughout the economy. Um, <clears throat> the 
but from the uh, like Bitcoin and business wise, all of the the news stories and things was um, pushing the idea that everybody in Cyprus is now running into Bitcoin because it's the perfect um, solution to to that problem uh, of confiscatable money. Um, but it just wasn't the, the the fact. When 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 people are um, more concerned about how they're going to feed the family next week, the last thing that they're doing is buying Bitcoin. Um, when they're queuing up for an ATM to take out their daily mandated at maximum of 100 euros um, or whatever it was, people aren't taking that cash and sticking it in a Bitcoin ATM. Um, it just doesn't work like that in the real world. Um, but at that time, I kind of got on board with the hubris, even though I see it and I was saying, but well, it's not actually really like that here. Um, but I, I, I did believe that that was the uh, a golden opportunity for Bitcoin. Um, and it, it probably could have been uh, with somebody smarter than myself at the helm of a business or, or whatever uh, at that time. But um, the idea was wrong. Uh, I compounded that by hiring the wrong people uh, and it just exploded. Um, I raised capital in the wrong way from within the community. Uh, and things like that. Uh, so, like, so many compounded mistakes, um, and it led to um, just three years of um, uh, th three years of uh, just basically negativity, um, uh, fighting through courts uh, and, and things like that. Uh, all, all whilst remaining silent to uh, clear my name of uh, what I'd been accused of and things. Um, through the, the legal processes, which are, I'm glad to say all came to an end. Um, and some positive came out of it because I retaught myself how to code and essentially built fast bitcoins whilst all that was going on um, as a means for not allowing it to break me. So that's a nice story. I mean, entrepreneurship it ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, absolutely. Um, but anything good in this world doesn't seem to be worth it if it's not. Uh, hard, mm. hard to obtain or achieve. So that was 2013. Now we got 2020. We got we are in an unprecedented. What do you want to call it? Like I mean, the economy de decimating uh, uh, era. What has changed? You know, also perception wise, uh, especially when it comes to merchants, businesses. You know, what's your perception? Um, in regard I, to Bitcoin, I, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I still think we're far too early. Um, it's still such a niche, um, but it's very easy to become uh, a hype man. Uh, Bitcoin's here, Bitcoin's perfect, it's going to solve every single problem. Um, and there's so many people that kind of wish that we could just wake up tomorrow in a, in a Bitcoin world um, and then. Whereas for me, that would create so much more suffering. And if there was a total financial collapse, it's not something that we should really cheerlead. Um, I've, I'm much more, um, I've got kids and, and things like that. We'd be fine. If we've got Bitcoin. But then you also, do you really want to be one of the few haves in a world of have nots? Um, that kind of makes you put well it increases the, the risk and things like that and people talk about opsec uh, and things like that um but that takes it onto a whole another level if you've got seven plus billion people that have nothing uh, and you, you you're one of the the handful of people that that actually has some wealth uh, and power and value uh, and stored value um you, you just become a target so I'd much rather see more of a, a, an orderly demise of the system. Uh, and I think that they've um, definitely started that now uh, as more people become aware um, of the fact that, yeah, they can just create this money on a database. And, uh, and it's, I, I do think it will take a, a few months before we start seeing that trickle down uh, and the inflation starts to kick in um, at the consumer's edge. Um, in, in a few months, uh, when, when people's grocery shopping uh, starts costing more and more and more, um, because otherwise the, the the layman really doesn't understand. They really don't care, uh, and I think that's a, a huge problem. Um, but it's an educational one. Yeah, 
Yeah, you're so you're so right on this. I mean, um, I always have to remind myself we're so early. It's um, you know the, the the comprehension process and and understanding. You know, just a fundamental question: What is money? Where does it come from? How is it created? What's what is, what's the root cause of all the symptoms? Um, but do you see like because I'm in based in Austria in uh, Vienna or sometimes in some other city uh, with my girlfriend and and um, and there I mean there seems to be like a wake up uh, uh, pr process taking taking place and there are some you know business people merchants say you know I would I would definitely be willing to offer my customers an alternative opt in whatever you know payment infrastructure. But I don't have the time. I mean, people just, you know, even my girlfriend, she has a business, she has a company, she works literally every day, but she says she would, yeah, she would love to. She would even give her customers five to 10% or whatever in that range, a discount so that people would start, uh, you know, at least uh, incrementally just start, you know, with an easy, smooth, user-friendly interface uh, application, just, just do a little bit trading, all right? Where do you see this process going? I mean, What's your position on this? Um, it's very much chicken and egg. Uh, in 2013, 2014, uh, in Cyprus, we was literally two weeks away. Um, the the board was on board with it uh, of the, uh, the the McDonald's restaurants in Cyprus. Um, it was literally we had four of the five directors on board with um, because we had created uh, like a POS device then. Um, for like a chip and pin card to, to manage your uh, multi-sig wallet that was held by the uh, or with the company. Um, so we've created this payment network as well alongside the, the main exchange type business. And uh, it, it was far too early. We didn't have lightning or anything like, then, uh, like that then. It was a very short-sighted, uh, really. Um, kind of understood that fees would have to go up. But at that time, this was pre all of the, the scaling wars and um, all of the, the drama that went on um, that event like ultimately has, um, we, we've been through that and we'll probably go through something similar again in the future uh, when it comes to privacy. Um, but, the, um, but the whole idea of like merchants and stuff, now we've got lightning uh, and uh, I think, Lightning's even earlier. Um, it's only what just over a year and a half um, since the the network launched and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, just seeing yeah, your just, screen. <laughs> yeah, just showing, yeah, in the background, uh, the fact um, so, that you was really was really liked your your, your the, the simple you know explanation of what it does you know and what's yeah, what's, the, what's the value. Quite um, yesterday. Um, we're just going through a soft launch with it just to make sure everything's great before we uh, push out with all of the, the related marketing and stuff. So, um, so for me, getting merchants to, to accept Bitcoin is, um, is a noble cause, but they're just not actually going to see very much usage. And it's uh, very easy for them to um, uh, lose lose hope or faith or trust in uh, the ideas that everybody's going to start paying them uh, in Bitcoin or they'll benefit greatly if they start accepting um, Bitcoin. Um, earlier on um, in like 2013, 2014, if a big company started accepting it, it was big news. Um, or if uh, something new came about, it hit the news and there was a, a huge uh, beneficial PR um, boost to any company that started accepting um, Bitcoin. But then you've also got the, when you're in the midst of the, the hype bubbles, as I like to, to call them, um, like in 2017, as soon as you add blockchain or change a business name, it pumps the share price and, and it was just sickening. Um, it, it's just how far and how detached um, reality come from uh, or how far we became detached from reality um, in like the financial sector and space. Um, and as somebody that's been through a couple of these cycles, I was just like banging my head against the brick wall. And it um, very much provides confirmation that we, we don't learn from history. We don't learn from previous <laughs> mistakes on the whole, um, yeah, yeah. So, which is a little bit yeah. disheartening, but... 
Yeah, my history we, tweeted always, always told me it's like it would be too good to be true if, if people learned out of history. But, you know, I think we're starting to learn. It's... <laughs> well, we always say that. That's the thing. <laughs> um, oh, we're, we're smarter today than we were yesterday. So we will learn from those mistakes. Uh, but they just seem to, to repeat and repeat. Um, it's probably going to be the same with, with money. And that's also probably long, longer term. One of my concerns with Bitcoin is um, we we all understand that how important those rules are, those consensus rules. Um, and is is that same emphasis of those rules going to be as strong in fifty years, in a hundred years, as what it is today, um, as close to that initial creation? Um, and are they going to get distorted over time? Is it oh, okay? We just need to change this one rule. Um, does that quickly become, oh, we can just change another one because we changed that one and it was fine. Um, so, and then um, is it going to fall into the same trappings of um, fiat currency that was on the gold standard and things like that? Um, but that's, that, that's more of a philosophical, longer term um, question for Bitcoin. Right. You know, the main concern of, um, let me go back to the merchant. Um, the main concern of the merchant, uh, also when I talked to my girlfriend, she says her main concern, the most important thing is that it's, it's, it's gotta be integratable. Like it's gotta be integrated into the, what do you call it? Like, um, cashier system, um, uh, accounting system also oh, because yeah. of tax reasons. So well, how would you pitch that? I mean, uh, see the thing for me is, uh, back to not the whole chicken and egg point. It's, um, our business model, uh, basically, I added payment processing on our POS device as a side project, as something that was just fun to build. Um, it's useful as well um, if you've got merchants that accept, if want to accept it. Um, our back end uh, basically enables them to um, like convert a portion of it into uh, fiat currency uh, to have it delivered to their bank account, or they can retain it all in Bitcoin. Uh, it's on a sliding scale, basically. Um, <clears throat> so that's the whole, um, uh, how do they cover their costs and stuff, but they can retain some of or their, their profits or a percentage of their profits of any trade, uh, of any um, payment that's processed and stuff. Um, but that's, for, for us, it's all just uh, a side, it, it's just like a, an additional bolt-on that we can make available to, to the merchants. Um, the key aspect of our business is basically um, turning their location into a physical place where somebody can go and purchase or get access to our services through um, our device that we provide them. Um, we do have uh, the ability to integrate into existing um, uh, POS solutions and things, but uh, for the most part, we have our own um, handheld device which produces the, the vouchers that we offer uh, and it also basically enables our users to sell bitcoins to us and collect cash from their locations. So it just handles all of those functions and it prints an end of day uh, report every day and uh, shows what money they've taken in or paid out uh, uh, and everything. So from uh, an accounting perspective, it's no different to selling um, or buying and selling um, uh, another product. Uh, like a, a prepaid voucher, um, like cell phone minutes uh, and things. Um, <clears throat> so we've tried to, to ensure that those headaches aren't felt by the merchant. All they do is literally just selling another product. And um, the, the payment processing is uh, exactly the same as if they had taken a credit card payment. Right. <laughs> so why don't you, um, um, so, so, what about what about the KYC process? I mean, is there a threshold for a KYC or? Um, before there was, um, and before I'm by the referencing before, I mean, before the Fifth Money Laundering Directive came into effect, um, we had um, thresholds where we would enable people to to buy and access Bitcoin um, without having to go through the KYC process. Um, they did have to provide some like, identifying information to us. Uh, but not like full on government overlord intervention um, KYC processes, uh, which we've had to add 
Um, if we want to stay in business, we have to do that and we have to jump through the, the regulatory holes. Um, <clears throat> and the um, ultimately, all we can do is promote best practices. So once you've actually bought your Bitcoin, take your privacy seriously. Um, self custody those funds. We never hold um, users' Bitcoins. We literally sell them and deliver them uh, to them. And um, the, uh, the the ideas of um, or education around what to do once you've actually bought your Bitcoin, um, how to store it, where to store it, how to get it onto that storage uh, is where um, we as a company should be focusing education on mm -hmm. um, to, to, just so we can promote best practices and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, the, uh, the KYC um, burden has arrived. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't support it um, or I'm not a proponent of it. Um, but I'm a realist and it's, if we want to have a business, we've got to do it. I'm not going to jail to sell somebody 20 pounds worth of Bitcoin. Um, <clears throat> because, um, uh, the, the people that are quick to shout you down for implementing these things, um, wouldn't feed my family. Um, so, uh, you, you have to do what you have to do. Um, but we can stick to our guns and, uh, promote, uh, best practices. Yeah. You know, what's important to, um, let's say to certain branches, you know, for example, if you have, uh, let's say a legal grow shop, you know, in Austria. Um, so it's important for the customers. They, they usually, you know, they pay in cash, you know, so, uh, uh, still, you know, it's not, it's not something illegal, but it just, you know, they just want to, you know, stay anonymous as, as private and or anonymous actually as possible and they pay cash. So if it should come eventually to that stage where, you know, people have the opportunity to you know, just just uh, have the QR code you know scanned and they, they, they pay the transactions completed instantaneously easy easy smooth and user friendly um, what about the privacy aspect I mean how, how can we um, guarantee that or, or you know enhance the privacy features um, from a, a technological uh, perspective there are far greater people to discuss that with than me um, th there is some uh, privacy benefits to using Lightning and things like that. Um, Taproot, which we uh, should hopefully see in the not too distant future, will increase the privacy on uh, with Lightning a little bit further and also increase the capacity uh, of on-chain uh, transactions, um, especially for, for larger like multi-seek transactions um, and uh, like lightning channel opening and closing transactions will all appear the same uh, on the actual network um, so th there's things like that and then there's uh, like wallets when it comes to like fingerprinting and stuff like that maybe um the developers can or the wallet developers can um pay it uh, or, or do more um to prevent or to to aid against uh, like wallet fingerprinting and stuff um but uh but from uh, for like the the end user, it <clears throat> it's it's a sliding scale privacy really, uh, especially for the end user. Um, you can go full on hundred um, percent ninja um, th with the way in which you you buy your Bitcoin. If you're willing to if to, you're willing to take the risks of meeting some strange fellow uh, in a car park, pay with cash. Um, that you've managed to acquire, uh, that you've not taken out of a bank, uh, that you've managed to acquire through offering goods and services, uh, things like that. So it's it's truly untraceable cash. So <clears throat> all the way down to like the granularity of the the, the, the bank notes and the serial numbers on the bank notes that you use to buy those Bitcoins with, um, all the way through to um, using some uh, KYC exchange, um, which unfortunately we are now. Uh, and things so the it is and then you've obviously got your on-chain do you put them through a coin join before you pay uh, and things like this um it, it's something that people should look into um and do like this i know it's a cliche but do your own research um and just always understand that it's a sliding scale and nothing is perfect 100 percent of the time 
Right. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go back to fast Bitcoin. Um, I, I like the you know the <laughs> very simple overview. Like w when a, when a, when the average person like comes on your page, uh, what's the what do you think is the like the uh, the instantaneous like somebody who's never like uh, really have has had anything to do with Bitcoin? Uh, like, what's how do you, how do you pitch this to the to the average user? Or merchant um the the merchant the, the pitch to the merchant is very different to um the, the the pitch to the end user um uh, fast bitcoin merchants uh, are basically they're just looking to generate additional revenues for their business uh, and they do that through um installing our or using uh, our point of sale device solution um it is literally a credit card sized uh, reader um, and then the uh, the end user uh, is somebody that is literally like searching how to buy Bitcoin or how to get Bitcoins fast or uh, everything like that so the the merchants is a completely different aspect of the business that's business to business sales they don't even need to understand or un have any inkling of what Bitcoin is or how it works to, to offer our services uh, and we've got some merchants that earn upwards of like two thousand pounds uh, a month in uh, additional revenues just by offering our uh, um, services, uh, which is great for them. Uh, and especially in this coming climate where retail could be impacted even more, um, then should hopefully be able to to help uh, and generate additional revenues for them. The end user, it's hundred percent. I just want to buy some Bitcoin um, and the uh, the way that which they can do that with us is they can go to one of the locations buy a voucher and um, there's actually one box missing from there uh, which we are uh, literally completing over the next two days just waiting for some video content um, which basically goes through the, the whole uh, how it works process uh, because the the old video content that we have um, was waiting on uh, the, the new site to be completed. Um, but we've added things like dollar cost averaging and stuff like that. Oh, that's um, great. I was just going to ask you that about DCA because we're all yeah, into DCA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got um, DCA, uh, but we've also added um, like a, a drip feature. Um, so basically, if you have, say, a £100 voucher or $100 voucher, you can redeem that and it'll just basically chop it up and execute uh, a delivery every 10 minutes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, an order every 10 minutes for 24 hours. So it just basically stretches, it's like a um, dollar cast averaging on steroids, um, basically uh, to, to average out your buy throughout the day. That's amazing. Yeah. So in essence, like the, this terminal, right? Isn't this is, uh, I, I don't see a picture of the terminal, but that's, that's essentially that uh, this terminal that the merchants receive. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, let me, let me, oh, let me get out of here. Uh, that is literally yeah. one of those. Nice. Slick. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's the, the device itself um, basically it just sits on the countertop um, and then when any of the uh, users or customers um, come through the door uh, they pretty much know what to, they're asking for uh, the merchant literally just enters the information uh, like the amount of the voucher clicks print prints it uh, we confirm that it's printed and stuff and then they activate the voucher once they've received the payment uh, job done and that's it right yeah. Right. Where are you guys located? I mean, uh, or or you know, where does your business expand? Like all all of European Union, or or um, we are um, just adding electronic deposit methods, so people will be able to deposit with us via bank account um, as well. Um, in Europe, the UK, um, Canada, and we are just going through the registration process with Austrac in Australia, um, and uh, we'll also be covered in the the EU. Um, right now, we've got locations, uh, like physical locations, merchants that have got our hardware sat in the stores uh, in the UK, uh, or say all across the UK, um, Canada, uh, Latvia, Estonia, um, 
we've got the first location in Germany um, that's just signed up. Uh, and as I say, Australia uh, is coming online too. Uh, hope we've got um, hardware on the ground in Uganda as well, uh, and going into uh, Togo, Ghana, uh, and Madagascar. Um, so we're uh, and then we're also looking at uh, like South Korea, Japan um, towards the end of this year, which may have been pushed back um, because of this virus uh, mm-hmm. issue. Mm-hmm. Um, so so we'll see if that's quarter four this year or quarter one next year for Southeast Asia. Um, so, so the network is growing. Uh, and as I say, we're adding uh, electronic deposits as well. So hopefully um, we can get even more people using Bitcoin that way. But I always want to maintain both the cash focus network um, and the, the electronic um, side of things as well. Mm-hmm. Sounds simple. So, uh, do do you uh, can you like talk about like what countries like demographically would inter- would be interested? W- where is the most traction like uh, demographically, like, country wise? Is can you like? Um, we have a clear pattern of how our users use our service. Um, they start with like a, a ten pound or a ten euro voucher. Just try it, see if it works, uh, and everything. And then they suddenly grow that over time, um, and we have a, a customer retention rate of above 87 percent um so once you've used us once they generally use us more than once and <clears throat> but that was uh, pre-covid uh, pre-fifth money laundering directive uh, so it remains to be seen just um what kind of impact all of these changes are going to have um on us going forward um but all um but so and the, the top the, the demographic of user is so varied um, and that's one of the, the things like with Bitcoin. Um, I actually tweeted about this yesterday. Um, I recorded a podcast with somebody called Zuby. I don't know if you know who they are. Um, it's a British rapper, uh, podcaster, um, quite popular. Um, he, after nine years of being in this space, I still struggle to find um, the, the best way to describe what Bitcoin is and how it can benefit um, the world and what have you um, without selling people on false ideals uh, and false ideas. So I tweeted about it yesterday. Um, somebody commented, the first thing someone said, described it as was unhackable, um, which again leads me to bang my head against the brick wall. Um, history has shown us that it's not unhackable. Um, Bugs do exist and they do occur and they can cause some rather large headaches. Uh, and to to have the, the ignorance that we'll have no bugs ever again going into the uh, into the future is just remarkably arrogant. So I'd never try and sell it to, to somebody um, on those uh, like oh it's perfectly safe, um, it's unhackable, like there's never going to be any problems with it. Um, I would never personally do that. Um, and then how, how do you describe it? Because for, for some people it's a censorship resistant uh, electronic version of cash. Um, for some people it's a censorship resistant store of value. Um, for some people it's just a hedge against inflation, um, especially if you're um, in, in a country that's... Um, like regularly used to like Argentina and places like that, um, Zimbabwe, where people have actually lived through um, like hyperinflationary events and stuff, um, you know, Venezuela. Um, but so how, like there is no perfect way of describing, um, I think, like I said in the tweet, I should probably uh, improve my communication skills. Um, maybe ask, questions of them first <laughs> uh, and then if all else fails just tell people that uh, orange coin good number go up if you just want to um, if, if you're just going to measure your wealth in your local currency um, and you just want to in, in increase the amount of uh, dollars or pounds or euros or whatever uh, then it's great it can be great for that as well um, but so can gambling on the football and the dogs and um so i i, I don't know 
<laughs> right. So what's the what's the roadmap for for fast Bitcoin? Have you like uh, for example, if if there are more like more intermediate and advanced uh, users, can they connect to, to to the full node or? There's no need um, because we're not a wallet. Um, so because to buy from us, you've got to provide us with a delivery address. So that is like essentially linking it to your full node. If your wallet is on your full node uh, and stuff. Um, so, so yeah, so as soon as you literally, um, provide your delivery address, you essentially, that's, that's our link, uh, across the Bitcoin network to your wallet. Uh, we don't want people's information. We don't want more information from people, um, than we need. Um, we're, we're not in the, the data mining business or, or anything We're we're in the business of trying to put Bitcoin into as many people's pockets as possible. Um, and, and the roadmap for the long term is to, um, hopefully grow out both sides, uh, of our uh, business, the electronic payments and, uh, like the electronic deposits and also the, um, the, the, the cash network or the retail network uh, to, uh, and basically hopefully put uh, enough locations uh, as close to as many people as possible. Um, so people don't have to um, by default look up to see if they've got a location near them. They can just understand that they've uh, got a fast Bitcoins location near them. Um, I think we've got um, you know, some great branding. Um, we've got a great domain name. Um, and we we are seeing uh, like high retention numbers when it comes to users. Um, so hopefully, just continue uh, growing um, and expanding the, the networks. Yeah, um, I, I really love the ethos uh, behind the philosophy behind your company. First of all, it's, uh, you know Bitcoin only, and uh, I mean if we look at all those you know platforms, exchanges with all the shit coins, and so that's why you know after talking to Nish, it's. Uh, I, I just love the the concept and philosophy and ethos behind it and and the simplicity you know it looks simple and I think that's what people need you know because they don't have the time you know to do all this you know listen to all these podcasts and it's all most of it's English and you know it's just so many obstacles you know yeah all the technical but like language wise and 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 yeah so we 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 are going to be adding um, like localize or better localization um, it's just right now most of, our initial growth plan, we're completely bootstrapped. We, we haven't done a round of funding or anything like that, um, which is may change in the future. But the, uh, the idea was to grow into the English language markets first. Um, it gives us a footprint to, to truly establish ourselves. Um, but now, as I say, we're looking at um, uh, Asia and things like that. Um, we have got literally like localization is ready to go. Um, so we will have, uh, complete translations uh, of everything, including all the video content and things that we're, we're making. Um, so, so yeah, that is, it's all, it all takes time. Uh, and as a business, uh, I'd love to, or just as a, I'd love to see other people doing the same sort of thing and building and, um, there's no competition yet really because the pie is so big. Um, and what you could deem as competition have so many flaws. Um, like, as you say, like with all the shit coins and things like that. Um, I, I think it's great that like coin floor in the UK, um, have gone with their no BS approach and stuff. Yeah. I'm good friends with, with yeah, yeah. I, I listened so. to, to Obi's interview. I'm good friends with Obi, uh, really respect him. Um, quite fun, thankful to him for, for advice and stuff as well. Uh, and um, <clears throat> like just watching his uh, and CoinFloor's transition into uh, becoming Bitcoin only and things um, has been great to watch. Um, and it's something that I can't wait to see more happening um, into the future. So, so yeah, like localization will be coming for all of these different markets and stuff, but we as I say we're, uh, we only have so much time and resources and, and things like that. So I'd absolutely love to see more people um, building and growing businesses and stuff. So, 
Yeah, it takes time. It's a process. But, you know, what makes me happy is that more and more people around me, just personally, from my personal perspective, but also from other people's encounters, people are waking up. They're, I mean, I'm getting literally calls from people I've never heard of in years. And, you know, whatever, worried about stock market or, you know, inflation or what. And so they're starting to ask questions at least. And that's that's great, you know. Yeah. Um, for uh, for, for what, how uh, valid they are, I think it's the Myers-Briggs concept of N-type and S-type personalities. Um, I think, yeah, pe people, or we do need more. Uh, inquisitive types to to start um, asking asking questions about the reality of the situation um, and how it all um, how it's all going to continue to work into the future. Um, maybe this time the the whole money printing um, issue isn't going to be the one that brings it down, but by nature it's going to need it again. Um, maybe they've got one more rodeo. Uh, maybe not. Um, but all we can, like I said, all we can do um, is, is continue building and improving every aspect of what we have um, for that moment, um, for when it's needed. Uh, because right now, we couldn't handle uh, a catastrophic event um, in global finance, and then everybody making a dart for Bitcoin. Um, all the biggest exchanges freeze up <laughs> still. Yeah. Uh, even eight years after Mount Gox's um, fiasco with delayed trades and um, lag uh, and things like that, um, you would think um, that trust, uh, I, I do understand there's been improvements, massive improvements since then, but it's still not quite there. Uh, even us as a business, uh, we couldn't scale right now to 100 million users and service them all with no headaches and uh, no issues. Uh, it's just the reality of the situation. Um, but all we can do is continue working towards being able to to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, just I just want people to build. <laughs> um, uh, so, but uh, yeah, curious. Uh, what's your thoughts? Like, uh, you know, uh, recently Paul Tudor Jones, you know, other market macro investors, Dan Piero, Raul Paul, all these you know macro investors in this space were. Uh, allegedly, you know, real established and famous, and 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 have a name and reputation. Like they understand Bitcoin. Like if if more and more of these, uh, you know, macro investors, family offices, hedge fund, even maybe even pension fund, maybe the you know laws will be loosened and uh, pension funds will be finally able to al allocate a little bit more percentages to Bitcoin. Do you see this coming? Like, <laughs> like um, to, I really enjoy listening to Raoul Paul. Um, he gets it. Um, the, the Paul Trudeau Jones one, um, I am pretty sure he hasn't booted up a, a cold card, bought some Bitcoin and stored it and self custodied it. Um, it. It's just like the, the, the gold bugs that buy paper gold. Um, unless you've got that gold in your hand, it's not your gold. <laughs> um, so I've, I've never really been a, a big uh, proponent of. Um, getting wall street into bitcoin per se um i'm much more personally uh, and ideologically driven around the end user um but it's not that's not me saying wall street isn't welcome who am i to say who can and can't use bitcoin it's permissionless like wall street doesn't need anybody's permission um to to come and uh, try and financialize um or use or apply their existing um uh, tools and frameworks and ideas of um, how uh, markets and everything should work. Uh, I'm more personally interested in uh, the farmer down the road um, selling me um, some potatoes or, or whatever for uh, Satoshi's um, or him buying some Bitcoin to store a little bit because he knows that inflation is coming down the road uh, uh, and things like that. So. Um, great the more people that um that are using it in some form is uh, hopefully gonna uh, drive additional interest into the space um but uh <clears throat> i think uh, and we'll see it with the um, the next fomo spike 
uh, with all of the, the media hype and everything um, that most people are just looking to, to make a quick book, um, get in, get out um, before the greed sets in um, and stuff. So uh, I'd, I'd much rather have um, people that are buying it from uh, a more informed position mm -hmm. other than uh, number go up. Um, but I, I do fully understand that there's a need for those types of speculators and um, gamblers and what have you in the market. They provide liquidity um, and they can um, drive some of the interest uh, and stuff, which does bring more uh, people that are looking to get more informed and uh, more understanding um, and essentially better hodlers um, into into the space. Yeah. Now we're on the same page, uh, uh, Danny. It's, it's just, you know, I think the fundamental monitor properties, um, understanding of fundamental monitor properties is so important. You know, the absolute scarcity, the difficulty adjustment, uh, the predetermined supply schedule, the uh, and the volatility is part of the price formation. You know, it's, it's we are yeah. 11 years in and it's part of the monetary evolution and just understanding the potential of a, of an increasing value appreciating, purchasing power appreciating money for the first yeah. time in human history. It's just amazing. I and mean, we, we're really literally going into deflationary economy if that trend continues into circle economies, what do you want to call it? Yeah, the, the, the thing... For me, is, is we just don't, oh, the vast majority of people don't understand it. For me, when you actually look at the, the core principles of Bitcoin as money, um, it's a no-brainer. Um, for me, um, maybe it's on the, um, maybe I expect too much of other people. Um, and trust me, this whole COVID um, lockdown, um, the social experiment that it is, uh, looking on from the outside uh, at other people's behaviors and stuff uh, has kind of set my faith in humans back uh, <laughs> by quite some margin. Um, but the, um, but yeah, for me, it's an absolute no brainer. Um, especially when you're measuring that value against something that is just created um, and uh, well created at will and um, is targeted to create more it's just part of the design of it um your yeah it's something that's absolutely scarce um compared to that it's, it's the most no-brainer um uh, position ever um but then also um I, i've witnessed it myself um part of the ideals for me is that uh, i'm not one for shouting about climate change and stuff like that. But for me, it's also common sense that we should tread as lightly as possible on the planet as what we should. Um, I couldn't really care less about the arguments into CO2 levels and stuff like that. But it's, if it's I'm... A, it's a science issue, but anyway, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Like, for me, like, it's not even that. It's a case of um, if I'm using less resources in the world, the better. So Bitcoin for me has taught me um, buy that more crafted, um, longer lasting piece of furniture over the cheap throwaway um, piece of furniture. Uh, I'd much rather get 15 years out of a, a cabinet than three years of moving twice and having to take it down and put it up and it's just broken. Um, I, my, my time preference has expanded so much um, since uh, discovering Bitcoin. And it's things like that is where for me the world will probably become a better place um if we uh it's, it's like externalities of what bitcoin uh, would enable um it is probably for me doesn't get spoken about enough right if that makes sense yeah totally yeah so um before we wrap up um danny uh, so um you know, I want, I want to make, uh, we, we want to do probably uh, with the uh, incorporation with Bitcoin Austria, it's a nonprofit uh, organization, like more and more information workshops, really like, un, you know, just, just the fundamental questions on what is money and what is possible, technic, you know, technical uh, possibilities and, and uh, how would you, uh, how would you direct like the potential, you know, open-minded 
users, merchants, uh, what's the roadmap? Or do you want to like give any kind of talk? Um, I think if they truly want to understand Bitcoin, it's just consume information, um, but consume information from all sides, uh, including the, the naysayers, uh, Try not to get into a bubble. Um, <clears throat> don't uh, there's. It's very easy to to fall into um, a world of just confirmation bias, and uh, it can lead people down the wrong path, and then they get false hopes, and then they'll lose all hope um, when that future that they thought they could foresee doesn't pan out. Um, I'm pretty sure that some of my understandings of Bitcoin and everything is wrong. Um, but I'm human. I have the right to be wrong. Um, so it's just education. We, we've tried to, to be as open as we can in, with our what is Bitcoin section. It's separated on tabs. And then at the end, there's like much more, uh, more resources available just through the links on there and stuff. Uh, like Jameson Locks, his uh, lock.net forward slash Bitcoin uh, .html page is just absolutely a gold mine. Uh, the Nakamoto Institute as well. Um, that's an, an another gold mine of information. Um, so it's just like anything, isn't it? It's, it's like becoming the most informed version uh, that, you, that you, you can on the subject. Um, but uh, one thing I would say is if you're new, you're not going to know how to fix Bitcoin within three days of discovering it. Yeah, it's a deep, deep rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, any other? Um, uh, I'm gonna put your site on the show notes. Any other um, resources or or tips or information you want to share? Uh, um, if you just go back to the uh, homepage um, of the uh, the site, one thing that people will notice is that we have Sats mode on now by default. So. Um, oh. So yeah, so our pricing mechanisms uh, is basically by default in Satoshi's. Um, if you're still um, old school, you can get the, the full uh, just uh, Bitcoin value. But the, the what is Bitcoin page um, is uh, probably our best effort so far uh, of providing uh, information on what Bitcoin is and stuff. Um, we've got all of the social media channels uh, like Bitcoin's faster and stuff. Um, we're on Facebook um, and also Instagram. Uh, and then there's myself, uh, BTC Danny. Uh, don't listen to too much what I say. Uh, I'm a dum dum. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anybody wants to ask any questions or, or anything, I'm pretty pretty available. Um, even if there is a bit of a delay in getting back to you, it's only because I'm busy. Um, but I will try and get back to, to most people. Really enjoyed this talk, Danny. Thanks yeah, so much. Too. Hope we can repeat this in the future, maybe in a panel discussion, whatever. And uh, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, always available. All right. Okay, thanks a lot. Talk to you. Have a good great day. Bye. I really enjoyed this talk with Danny Brewster, CEO of Fast Bitcoin. I really love the ethos again, you know, their philosophy, their concept, their business model, the simplicity of it, you know, and uh, the educational approach and the tools they have available also and the links and tools they have on the website. It's really great. It's a Bitcoin only really ethical Bitcoin company trying, you know, to, to deliver value to users, merchants, uh, you know, whoever wants to even auto uh, you know, the stack sats auto DCA. So yeah, uh, really appreciate for listening. Um, please, uh, subscribe, follow me. It would help me enormously. Thanks so much for your support and for listening, retweet it, you know, share it, whatever you do, leave me a positive review and, um, hope we can do this again. If you're neutral, let me know your questions. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com and you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Telegram, all the show notes. Thanks so much. Have a great day.